Hi, this is David Glover. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about intensity. Intensity is basically the measure of how hard or how fast you're going. And as endurance athlete, athletes, we care about intensity because we don't want to go too fast where we fatigue early and have to slow down later on. At the same time, we don't want to go too slow where we're leaving unnecessary time on the table. So it's about ha finding that happy median. And there are multiple ways to measure intensity. Probably the most important because it's one you have with you no matter what is rate of perceived effort. And this is basically your own subjective measure of how hard you're going. It's paying attention to your body, your heart rate, how your muscles feel, your fatigue level, etc. The nice thing about this is you always have it with you. It's never going to break down because you, you don't have any batteries that die. There's no equipment involved. The con of it is very subjective. When using rate of perceived effort, Borg scale, either from 1 to 10, where 1 being very easy to 10 being as hard as you can, or from 6 to 20, the same thing, is probably the most common scale used for rate of perceived effort. When you're using rate of perceived effort, you really want to pay attention to what your body's doing. How do your legs and muscles feel? What's your breathing rate like? How, how hard does your heart feel like it's beating? How, how hard does the effort feel? Does it feel easy or does it feel extremely hard? So these are all cues that you want to continuously self-monitor to adjust your pace. Where rate of perceived effort becomes very powerful is with, when you use it in conjunction with another tool like heart rate, pace, or power so that you have both objective measures measured by devices as well as subject, the subjective RPE and used in conjunction you can really get in, really dial in the right intensity for that duration of that event you're trying to do. A second measure is heart rate. Heart rate increases proportionally with effort. So as our effort goes up, so as we go harder, heart rate goes up proportionally. So it can be a good indicator of intensity. The downside of heart rate is also subjective to a number of other factors such as hot weather because your body has to cool itself so it's sending more blood to the surface of the skin for cooling and sweating which increases your heart rate. It could also be subject to anxiety, caffeine, or just the nerves of race day. A third measure of intensity is pace, so how fast you're going. With all the GPS devices out there now, it's, it's very easy to measure your pace. Pace is great because it's measuring your actual output, so how fast you're going, but it doesn't take into account other things going on with your body. So if you're sick, for example, an eight minute pace may feel horrendous, where if you're feeling well, eight minutes may be easy. And there's power. So powers would be the equivalent for the bike as pace is to the run. So power is basically a measure of your work output. And again, it's either you do it or you don't. The nice thing about power is no subjectivity. It's very objective. The downside is it's a lot of data to look at. And so if you're not an athlete who's willing to download your, your power data files and look at the graphs and, and compare them over time, then it may not be a great tool for you. Most of all, remember that intensity is something you have to practice and be aware of. And it, it, may, it takes time. It may take a few races. It may take a few years before you can really dial in and get an, an idea of what your body can and can't do. This is where it helps to, to keep a training log and make notes of the different efforts you're doing as well as follow a training program that has different intervals worked in. By training at, at different intensities, you can, you can actually improve your body's ability to sustain and maintain those intensities for longer periods of time. Good luck. Mm -hmm.